Welcome to my library, dear guest. My name is Cool, and I will be your storyteller. Today's story is a really long one-parter about a typical that guy. Nothing more needs to be said. I hope you will enjoy. The most toxic player I've ever dealt with. By the author, Rocco Wise. This is a long one. Also spoilers for Ghosts of Saltmarsh. I've been listening to some of the stories for this sub for a few weeks now, and I thought I'd share my recent experience with a toxic asshole. For some backstory, me and my regular D&D 5e group split up a few months back. Two of them moved, one quit playing, but the other three, including myself, wanted to keep playing. We always play IRL, so we wanted to find local people, which led us to a Facebook group where we met some people looking to start a new campaign. Since I'm not on Facebook, it was my two friends who first played with these guys, and they told me it was fun. They asked me if I wanted to join in, so I did. For context, here's the cast of characters. Me, playing an Asimar Forge cleric. Warlock, my brother-in-law, good friend and someone I've played with for years. Wizard, brother-in-law's co-worker, friend of mine, and part of our D&D group for years. DM, a new guy we met who's pretty cool. Sorcerer. This story's toxic douchebag, but pretty cool when we first met him. Rogue. Sorcerer's shy friend who didn't talk much, but was okay. Side note. Two sessions in, we had a TPK. So first characters were not the same classes as what I'll refer to everyone as. Right off the bat, Warlock warned me that we had to play at Sorcerer's house since he is immune on compromise and his house is 30 minutes north of where we live. We thought, that's fine, plus everyone is vaxxed, so no big deal. On top of that, he warned me that Sorcerer has been known to go off into weird tangents or strange stories about his life in the middle of the game. Annoying, sure, but not deal-breaking. Since I live nearby Warlock, we usually meet up at his place for a beer, talk for a bit, then carpool to Sorcerer's place. The campaign we are running is Ghosts of Saltmarsh, which is interesting because I haven't played a module since I first started playing 5th edition. I'd gotten spoiled for so many years because Warlock and Wizard are really good DMs, and they mostly created awesome homebrews. So my first session there, I met everyone, and it goes pretty well, with a few exceptions. First thing I notice is that Sorcerer's house is disgusting. Dishes are piled up in the kitchen sink, boxes of crap are everywhere and make it hard to navigate, and the bathroom litter box hasn't been cleaned in days. I just felt especially bad for Warlock because he has a pretty bad allergy to cats. For your information, cats shed dander just like humans do, and when you don't clean your house, it has a tendency to build up. It got so bad for him that he had to take antihistamine once before the drive-up and again halfway through the session. Second thing I noticed is that Sorcerer had a lot of D&D-related things. Ziploc bags filled with minis, a gumball machine filled with D20s, and cool ship schematics made from wood that he laser engraved himself. For some context, Sorcerer and his friend Rogue were in their 50s and 60s. Me and my friends are in our early 30s, and the new DM is in his late 20s. This guy has been playing D&D before the rest of us were even born, which sounds awesome. Unfortunately, just because you have more stuff doesn't make you better at the game. Lastly, for someone who has played D&D for so long, it really seemed like Sorcerer didn't know what he was doing. He would constantly do things that made the rest of us scratch our heads. He'd constantly be like, I throw a dagger at the enemy. I don't know why he was so fascinated with throwing daggers at people. You're a sorcerer, use your cantrips if you don't want to waste spell slots. 
Then he'd stare at his character sheet for a few minutes during his turn, thinking he has bonus action. Spoilers, he didn't, but that didn't stop him from wasting time on every one of his turns. During the second session, we had cleared up the haunted house, which was just a smuggler's safe house. As we were gathering up items, the smuggler's ship arrived just offshore. We devised a plan to take the ship and kill its crew, which goes off well at first. All the crew on the top deck is easily slid by us without alerting the lower decks thanks to the heavy rain coming down. So we get a little cocky and Warlock decides to shout to the below deck, We are under attack! To cut a long session short, with the help of some questionable strategy and a lot of very unlucky rolls later, we all die and our bodies are thrown into the ocean. Ro couldn't make it this session, so the DM ruled that he was able to escape. It was frustrating, but we didn't want to give up on the campaign. So we decided that we will be back the next week with new characters. Inspired by his screw-up, Warlock wanted to roll with the bad decisions character type and rolled up his current character. A half-dwarf, half-minotaur, minotaur as we came to call it, Pirate captain named Captain Hindsight. An impulsive hexblade warlock who made questionable calls, then said, Hmm, maybe we shouldn't have done that. Eccentric, maybe, but our group likes to have fun and come up with creative and weird characters. A wizard friend collaborates with him and comes up with a halfling divination wizard named Finn Foresight. The main strategist, captain's right-hand man, and someone who tries, and fails, to steer hindsight in the right direction. I decide that we need a dedicated healer, so I shoot for a wise, stoic cleric that will add some desperately needed insight to this party. He may be a pirate, but he's the party's moral center and has a heart of gold. In the next session, we find out that the sorcerer did die, but was saved last minute by a goddess of the sea. In exchange for saving his life, he would devote himself to her and gain his third level in Warlock. Our new characters meet up with Rogue and Sorcerer, who tell us what happened, and we tell them we will help them get revenge. We tell them that we need a new boat anyway, since the last boat we had sunk after Warlock failed to go around a rocky outcrop in the water. It's around this time that I started to see a noticeable change in Sorcerer's behavior, both during the game and out. Outside of the game, he was super generous to everyone. He would give us snacks or candy when we played, offered to give us duplicates of minis he didn't want anymore, and even food from his pantry he couldn't eat anymore because of his new diet. However, in the game, he started acting more brash towards us. He began to rudely question any and all strategies that were not his. On top of that, he got irrationally selfish when it came to items we found. After we got ambushed by some frog people and killed them, we found this really nice plus one spear. Perfect match for the Hexblade Warlock with the Polar Master Feet, right? Nope. First thing the sorcerer said was, I want that spear, it's mine. I glanced at Warlock, like, is he serious? Confused, we then had to convince him that the spear was wasted on him. But what happens if I get cornered by an enemy? That's how I died last time, he said. It was like arguing with a child. His strength score was crap, so his plus to hit wasn't very good. Plus, he was squishy as hell. Why would you want to attack with it in the first place when you have decent cantrips? But I'm part warlock now, I have proficiency in simple weapons. Never mind the hexblade right next to you that is built for melee, has polar master and knows how to actually play as his class correctly. After some time he eventually comes around and gives up trying to take the spear. Believe me when I tell you he went through the same argument any time we would loot bodies. With every session that went by, it seemed like he became more of an asshole. He started acting like someone you'd find on r slash I am the main character. 
He chimed in all the time to give his two cents, even if his character wasn't in the same room. Speaking of which, he didn't seem to have a discernible character to speak of. Him and Rogue didn't play around with any accents, underlying personality traits, or anything else to differentiate between themselves and the persona they are trying to play as. I know that you don't need your character to walk around with a cockney accent to make them stand out, but if you just talk in your normal voice without changes to a cadence, infection, or tone, then it's really hard to tell who is speaking at the table. Things like that end up making his questioning of Warlock's plans seem more personal than needed to be. Me and Wizard were his trusted advisors, so we knew how to approach him with things like Captain, I believe this course of action would be more advantageous. For Sorcerer, it all boiled down to Your plan is dumb, but my dumb plan is better. We genuinely couldn't tell if it was him or his character that we should call an asshole. On the car ride home, after one session, Warlock and I got into a kinda heated argument about how we should go about dealing with Sorcerer going forward. We did agree that his behavior was getting aggravating, so Warlock decided to talk to the DM about the problems we had. DM called him up to have a discussion about some of our concerns, and we thought he would have had the self-awareness to realize he was being a dick. But if you think he was an ass before this, just wait. It gets worse. This guy started becoming the archetype of the quintessential that guy. One thing he always did that annoyed me was being the backseat player. Constantly telling me, No, you should do this. Or, Are you sure this was a good idea? This one session we were tasked with earning the trust of some lizard folk in a nearby settlement. They wanted us to go kill a giant crocodile that was terrorizing their swamp. During the fight, Warlock casted Hex on him, making him take extra damage and giving him disadvantage on all athletics checks. Seeing this opportunity, I leap onto the croc's snout and try to grapple him. I am hands down the strongest one in the party with an 18 in strength and proficiency in athletics from my first level being in fighter. Now, he's grappled for a few turns and cannot do his bite attack to grapple someone else. Of course, Sorcerer just scoffs and keeps telling me, Why don't you just hit him? Gee, I don't know. Maybe because it sounds like a fun badass thing to do that burned one of his attacks and distracted him so you guys can attack him. Plus, I'm not gonna pass up an opportunity to get a Gator wrestling. I swear, whenever it was my turn, I could hear his eyes rolling from across the table. Dude sucked at playing his character, yet always chastised me for how I played mine. We eventually tracked down the ship that the party died on to a port city nearby. After we got done with some business between the Salt Marsh Council and a tribe of lizard folk, we set sail in a small clipper ship that the council let us rent. The vessel we were looking for worked for a notorious smuggler that Saltmarsh wanted us to get rid of. Not just that, but this ship was behind schedule and their boss wasn't happy. The plan was to imitate another smuggler crew working for this boss, and split their crew up onto both ships to deal with them. We get to the port and Sorcerer, of course, wants to go with us. Keep in mind, this captain is the same guy that killed us, and would definitely recognize the sorcerer. Me, Warlock, and Wizard find this captain drunk and passed out in a nearby tavern. We deceived him into believing we are sent here by his boss, and that plans have changed. We could have the crew to split up between both ships, then sail off together. The idea was to separate them so we could either bribe them to mutiny or thin out the herd a little, if need be. Turns out, I got stuck on the smaller ship with Sorcerer and Rogue. Sorcerer insisted that he be the one to convince them to switch sides, since he had the higher charisma. Dude seriously would go up to one crew member when they are by themselves and say, Hey, we are planning on taking over your ship. You can either join us and get paid, or you die. 
your choice. This is the classic, my stats speak for themselves type of player you might encounter. Someone who has no idea what they are doing, but believes their character is good at it because some numbers in a box said so. I don't care if you roll a nat 20 with plus 7 to persuasion. You can't just go up to a stranger and demand he join your side. Obviously, this plan didn't go too well. We were talking to three of them on the lower deck, and they decided to attack us for talking about mutiny against their captain. I knew that the ship we were trying to steal still needed a large crew to man. Killing all of the crew seemed cruel, and I thought that if I showed some of the mercy, a few might join us. After I downed one of them, I gave them a healing word to show some goodwill. I try to convince them that this won't end well for them, but I fail in persuading them. They then attack Sorcerer, who stirs daggers right at me the entire time. He mopes and complains that I let him take damage. You better fucking heal me when it's your turn, he said. He only took 8 damage the entire fight and blamed me for the whole thing going south. He wouldn't be here if we followed my plan and killed them while they were sleeping. So their crew on our ship shout out that they are under attack. Wizard and Warlock on the other side see that the plan failed, and Warlock decides to challenge their captain to a duel. Captain puts up his first mate as his champion, the nasty barbarian that ended up killing a few of our previous characters. Warlock kills him and takes over control of the ship, so task failed successfully, I guess. Unfortunately, Sorcerer then tries to create a running joke that I'm conspiring to secretly have everyone at the table killed, all because he took a little damage. Every time we would run into some enemies, he's smugly saying, You gonna attack them this time? Or, you're not on their side, are you? So, remember when I talked about my friends and I wanting to have fun? Well, we take not being serious very seriously. We do strictly adhere to the rules, but the rules also say to have fun. And if we aren't having fun, then what's the point? Because we've known each other for so long, we like to crack jokes and get into ridiculous situations while playing. Sometimes our dark humor comes out and we had gotten pretty comfortable with this new group. None of our jokes were racist, sexist, or bigoted, but they weren't for everyone, and they were mostly aimed at each other. On top of that, we never made it personally offensive and always knew where the line was drawn. Well, clearly, Sorcerer couldn't read the room, because he tried so desperately to crack terrible jokes at us. Of course, he always thought it was funny, and no one else. No one likes the guy who tries so hard to be funny, but only ends up sucking all the air out of the room. After we had taken over the TPK ship, only three of their original NPC crew were left. The original captain, who was drunk and was now demoted, an insane dwarf, and a human female who was quiet and liked tea. Clearly, she was the only one we could rely on when the rest of the party went shore. Captain Hindsight and myself went to her to have a chat before we disembarked. Hindsight told her, While we are away, the former captain is in charge, but we trust you more. Make sure to keep an eye on the rest of them. Once he finished saying that, I was going to tell her that she will have the unofficial title of bosun, and the pay that goes with it. As soon as I said the words, we trust you more, Warlock loudly shouts, He just said that. Why are you repeating what he just said? Are you a parrot? I don't see any feathers on you. I know we're pirates, but you're no parrot. I was trying so hard to keep my composure with him yelling over me. There's nothing I hate more than someone loudly talking over others, trying to interrupt. On top of that, it wasn't even close to being funny. No one laughed except him, and everyone else was just annoyed. Once he shut up, DM asked me what I was trying to say, and I just replied, Never mind. Not important. 
I could tell that the DM was getting really pissed at him. I just wanted to leave after that, but I sucked it up and continued. You might be wondering why I haven't really brought up Rogue all that much. And honestly, he didn't do much at all. He would only participate whenever there was a battle or throw out a random suggestion. I could tell he was really nervous in front of new people, which is understandable. DM kept throwing him opportunities to RP, and he never really got into them. Considering that he is friends with Sorcerer leads me to believe that this is just the way he is, or that he has probably been browbeaten by Sorcerer so many times that he's scared of doing anything for fear of being judged. Also reminds me of a story that Warlock told me one day when we weren't playing. Before I joined, Wizard and Warlock remember talking to the rest of the group the first day they met. Sorcerer told them that he's joined quite a few D&D groups through Facebook, and none of them lasted very long. This may sound a bit conspiratorial, but after getting to know him more, I really think that Sorcerer is just a toxic narcissist. Someone that either alienates people who have a sense to avoid someone like him, or he lulls weaker, more insecure people into a harmful friendship. I've been in an abusive relationship, and I know exactly what it looks like. It could all just be a guess and totally not true. But I can't forget how he would just switch back and forth between being nice and mean so abruptly. One session, he gave me one of his extra foldable dice trays to keep, then five minutes later berates me for only using healing word and not cure wounds on him. I'll never forget the last session we had with him. Man, what a shit show. We were tasked to go into a haunted marsh north of Salt Marsh. The council told us that there was some evil that was emanating from there, and wanted us to find it and destroy it if possible. Sorcerer grabs a horse and cart since it takes a while to get there. Myself and the rest of the party prepares to leave the ship for a few days. We tell the crew to behave while we are gone, and the crazy dwarf tells me to sort off. I told him to not disrespect his superiors, and he challenged me to a fight. Just myself and DM roll initiative, and me not wanting to waste time decided to cast command on him. He fails and I tell him to swim, at which point he jumps off the ship into the water and swims out of the harbor like a crazy person. I thought it was a clever way to avoid unnecessary combat, while Sorcerer just said, Good job, you wasted a spell slot. You do know the place we are going to is haunted, right? I don't even respond. My patience for him is gone by this point. Eventually, we make it to this haunted swamp and find that it is infested with these cursed spores. After a fight with a few cursed trees, we came upon a clearing with some charred bones. We heard a legend that, long ago, a witch was taken here by the citizens of Saltmarsh and burned alive. Sorcerer the entire time, tells us not to investigate the clearing, and that we will either die or be cursed if we stay here. We don't listen, and upon closer investigation, we find that these bones belong to a little girl. It's pretty obvious that the villagers killed an innocent child and used her as a scapegoat for whatever woes they were having, like Salem. Being a righteous cleric, I cannot abide this travesty and begin digging a grave. All I hear is Sorcerer telling me what stupid idea this is, and that we might as well just all kill ourselves and get it over with. I perform burial rites to the young girl, and the DM tells me, You sense a ghostly hand upon your cheek, and get the feeling of a soul finding peace. The turmoil that envelops this clearing seems to have passed. By this point, it should seem obvious that we are flat out ignoring any advice Sorcerer gives. With it getting late and the clearing sort of safe, we decide to take a long rest. After we wake, Wizard checks the swamp to see that it is still infested with the cursed spores. We then realize that this is not the source of the curse, 
And of course, Sorcerer has to complain that I wasted everyone's time. Further into the swamp, we locate a small shack that is covered in moss, vines, and spores. I cast Detect Magic and find out that there is some vile, magical energy coming from the inside. We go on only to be ambushed by a black pudding. After two rounds, I get a crit from black pudding and fall to zero HP. Now I like to immerse myself in the characters I play, and of course that means I can get attached to them. I think everyone knows how tense and frightening it can be when your character goes unconscious. So, when Sorcerer wants to laugh at me for almost dying, it can be especially nerve-wracking. <laughs> you should see your face right now. You're pale as a ghost. Let's see if you die, he tells me. Dude, I'm a heavily armored frontline cleric. I'm the party's main aggro puller, and you're going to mock me for taking a beating while you dick around in the back ranks? Fortunately, Wizard is there to give me a nice healing word, and we end up killing it. I cast Detect Magic again to see where the source is, which leads us to a bat that has a corpse with growing fungus out of it. DM says, Out of the chest of this corpse, there is a large fungal growth with spores all around it. The energy seems to be coming from the body. Sorcerer chimes in, it's a trick. There is a trap door underneath the bed. That's where the magic is coming from. There's so much I could continue complaining about, but this story is already long enough. I decided to pull out my dagger and cut around the fungal growth and yank it out. A cloud of spores burst out, but I pass my con safe and find the source of the curse inside his body. A cursed ring of three wishes with only one wish left. Cue the usual, yeah, that's my ring now, from Sorcerer, but I decided to hold on to it myself. After all, I found it. Why should I give it up? Plus, it's cursed. If we are going to give it to someone, it's definitely not going to be him. We leave the swamp, deciding what we should do with the ring. Warlock says that if we find a powerful enough cleric, we might be able to have them cast Remove Curse on it. Maybe if we give it to the council, then they will take it in exchange for some nice magic items for all of us. Not sure what to do, we see there is a small village on the outskirts of the swamp. I stop there to tell the villagers that the curse has been lifted, and to try and gather any information. Sorcerer is being a scaredy cat as usual, not wanting to confront anyone or anything of mystery. He's afraid that a bunch of peasants and farmers will try to kill us if they know we have the ring, even after we stop the curse. Myself and Warlock ask them if they have ever seen this ring, at which point, I kid you not, Sorcerer shakes his head, looks at us and just says, You're both dumbasses. That right there. That was the breaking point for me. This guy has done everything under the sun that could qualify him for the worst D&D Player of the Year award, but this? Openly insulting someone to their face for doing something you don't like in a fantasy game? Seeing that things are getting tense, Dien ends the session there. On our way out, Sorcerer shrugs it off and says, Hey man, nothing personal. I just wouldn't play your character the same way. I nod and just say, don't worry about it. On the ride back, I am furiously ranting about what just happened. At this point, Warlock and I are done. We both agree to text DM in the morning, telling him that we either won't be playing with Sorcerer, or we won't be playing at all. Turns out that DM had called up Warlock shortly after he dropped me off. They had a long conversation about that night's session, and he had already decided to cut Sorcerer and Rogue out of the campaign. At this point, everyone was miserable just being around him. DM already had a talk with him about his behavior, and it was clear that he wasn't going to change. 
It sucked that Rogue had to go too, but he was friends with Sorcerer, so it seemed like a package deal. Plus, he didn't do anything outside of combat, so not much of a loss there. I do still feel bad about cutting him, though. It's clear he doesn't have many friends, and the one friend of his we know is a toxic douchebag. But it's okay, because we never saw Sorcerer again. So, that's my story. Sorry if it was long, but I had a lot I wanted to get off my chest. Even with everything that happened, there were a few silver linings to the story. We made a new friend, the DM whose campaign we are still playing in. We found a replacement, a new swashbuckler rogue who's also a cool guy and not a prick. And now we play over at Wizard's Place, which is so much more clean and inviting, not to mention only ten minutes from my house. Moral of the story? Cut out toxic people in your life. I used to think people can change, and to some degree they can. But people who act like this are doing it to fulfill some emptiness inside themselves. Cut them out like that fungal growth, and never look back. Well, this was... a very, very long story. Sure, at some points it kind of looked like the author just wanted to rant. Complaining about smaller things that I wouldn't necessarily agree with are problems, but I get it. It all bottles up and at some point you are just sick of it. Plus, the moral's right. If you do have toxic people in your life, do not hesitate to just cut them out. You will be better off for it. Otherwise, I don't have much to say here, except don't be a that guy, and especially do not tell people how they should play their characters. A piece of advice, such as a you could do this, is far more different from a you should do this. Well then, that was it for today's story. But before we end things here, I have an announcement to make. I finally opened up my own Discord server. Mind you, it's the first time I'm actually hosting a public one, so um, forgive me if I make a few mistakes or blunders. But I am rather excited to actually be talking to more of you guys. And, of course, you all to each other. My energy for the day is always rather low, so forgive me, I may not always be online but I will absolutely try my best to interact with you guys. So, I do hope to see you there. Now then, I hope you enjoyed your stay and that I will see you again soon, for there are always more stories to be shared.